Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about varicose and spider veins. What are some of the risk factors? What are the treatment interventions? What are some of the nutrition and exercises that you should do to help improve varicosities? Let's get right into it. <clears throat> varicose veins is basically a weakening of the valves in the vein. What that means is that the heart pumps and pushes blood through the arteries to the extremities. And the blood has to come back to the heart through the veins. The veins have a one-way valve. What that means is that blood should get through and up and the valve should automatically close. However, with varicose veins, you have damage to the valves as well as the uh, veins itself and it creates ballooning of the veins as well as what we call spider veins. 23% <clears throat> of adults have varicose veins, 22 million of them are women, and 11 million are men. Of those, 2 million have chronic venous insufficiency, meaning they have very large varicose veins that can be actually painful. What are some of the risk factors? Obviously, there's age. As we age, uh, the veins are not as pliable, there's some damage to the veins uh, and the valves. Birth control pills. Hormone replacement therapy or estrogens can be damaging to the veins. Females have it more. You also have a family history of var varicose veins, which increases the risks. If you have a history of deep vein thrombosis, it also increases the risk. Sedentary lifestyle. These days, sitting in front of computers for hours on end is commonplace. Computer programmers, right? Children sitting in front of the computer um, playing video games. Truck drivers who drive long distances. <clears throat> Pregnancy. Pregnancy, especially if you have more than one, can create varicose veins. And this is usually related to hormone fluctuations. Smokers can damage the veins. Being tall. So if you're very tall, the veins have to work a little harder, the muscles have to uh, work a little harder, and it has to travel longer distances to get back to the heart. So some of those taller patients will also have varicose veins. Symptoms. You can get burning, itching, cramping, swelling, Skin discoloration in the lower extremity primarily, right? <clears throat> For some people, it can be quite painful. Medical intervention. Intravenous ablations. Usually these are radiofrequency or laser applications to help uh, shrink the veins. You can do sclerotherapy, which are little injections to, to make the veins a little smaller. In extreme cases, they're going to do what we call surgical stripping. So they'll go in and strip the veins. Now, let's talk about excessive endogenous estradiol related to pregnancy, obesity, menopause, and hormone replacement. So estrogens can damage the, the veins and the valves. So having excess of amounts of it can be problematic. That's why you have women who have, let's say, are on birth control, and they sit on a plane for six, eight hours, and they can develop a deep, deep vein thrombosis, right? So having uh, excessive estrogens in our system can create a problem with the veins. Now let's talk about obesity. With obesity, in the fat tissue, there is an enzyme called aromatase. And aromatase converts testosterone to estrogen. So being overweight or having excessive fat tissue in itself will increase estrogen levels. So you have to minimize excessive weight, right? There are some nutrition that can help. I mean, cruciferous vegetables can be very helpful. Dim, which can be in a supplement form, and chrysin creams can also uh, help block the aromatase enzyme and prevent it from going testosterone to estrogens, all right? Absolute necessity, you have to exercise, without a doubt. 
it's a must. Calf and ham hamstring stretching and strengthening are very important. Recumbent bikes, so sitting, or you can do air bicycles on your back. So you lie down, you just kind of pedal your feet. That's to just kind of increase the circulation. <clears throat> Yoga um, is very good for stretching and strengthening the lower extremity. You can do squats. So if you're a little bit older, I would do half squats. Don't go all the way down, just do half squats. Compression socks would help prevent further damage to the veins. So you can utilize compression socks if you have to be on your feet for a long time or if you're sitting for long periods of time. So you really do want to avoid sitting and standing for long periods. So you should get up every maybe hour, do some calf raises, calf stretches, hamstring stretches, right? If you're standing for long periods in one place, it can be problematic. So you should be moving your legs, you maybe using compression socks. So exercise in itself is crucial. Now these are simplistic, but you can obviously do more uh, to increase the circulation as well as the muscle strength contracture of the lower extremity, able to push the blood back into our heart. Diet and nutrition. You have to reduce pro-inflammatory foods. Gluten can be one of them, grains can be one of them, dairy, cheeses. Uh, for some people it's nightshade, some people it's um, lectins. But you have to reduce pro-inflammatory foods. Basically get rid of things that are processed, food coloring. Another one is BPA, <clears throat> right? BPA is found in plastics and it's pretty much everywhere. So if you're cooking with plastics, you have these you know, companies, they use a steak and they put it in a vacuum sealed plastic and you put it into hot, boiling hot water. That's crazy. <clears throat> You're releasing BPA. You have to minimize uh, uh, plastics because plastics have an estrogenic effect on our body. So minimizing plastics is a big deal. You can also do intermittent fasting. It gives your body a break from these inflammatory foods or even processing foods. You can combine intermittent fasting with ketogenic diets, and for some people it can be quite beneficial. Supplements. Butcher's brew. Diosamin, found in uh, peel of citrus fruits. Hesperidin, orange and tangerines. Horse chestnut. Has sapins, right, which uh, <clears throat> in this case is called eskin and it's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant effects. Rutin, found in apple, passion flower, buckwheat. What does the five supplements here have in common? They're all flavonoids, has an anti-inflammatory effect, right? And it improves circulation. So having these five supplements can be quite beneficial for our veins. Of the five, I would say horse chestnut probably is number one on my list, but using some of these uh, in combination can be quite beneficial. Now, with varicose vein, there is no quick, easy fix. It takes time. So it might take a year or two. You have to exercise you know, regularly. You have to take some supplements. You have to change your diet. But you can reverse some of the impacts that you can have with varicose veins. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.